Hello and welcome to MTM Vegas. If you want to know the truth about Virgin Hotels Las Vegas, how the opening went, what to expect on the hotel side, the casino side, the restaurants, the bars, this is the episode for you. Our friend Rick from Travel on Points was there on opening night. He got there at noon. He stayed in the hotel. He was there for the casino opening and he's going to share all of his impressions, what he thinks is good, what he thinks is bad, and why it was really not a great experience and why he won't be staying there again. All of that's coming up right now. You do not want to miss it, but don't forget to subscribe to the channel, smash the thumbs up button for me, and leave a comment. We want to discuss this entire Virgin Hotels opening in the comments. We want to know what you guys think. Thanks so much for watching. Let's hit it. So Rick, welcome to MTM Vegas. I'm so glad that you were able to join us because I was originally hoping to stay Virgin Hotels on opening night, but I couldn't resist Florida. So you uh, did the dirty work for me. You stayed on opening night. You paid as a paying guest and you're gonna give an honest review about exactly how the Virgin Hotel's opening was, what people should expect, and I'm guessing how you were disappointed uh, based on all of your tweets and all of your stuff. And I know you have a full review up on Travel on Points, so people can read all about this as well. But welcome to the show, and thanks so much for joining uh, Mark and I to talk about Virgin. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, Sean, uh, Sean saw all the partying in Miami Beach, and he was like, nah, I'm going to skip Virgin and go hang out <laughs> with all the all the people Absolutely. getting wasted and, uh, and uh, causing havoc down in Miami. Absolutely, and uh, I didn't, uh, didn't have anything to drink, but I did film them, so hopefully I'll have a, a video for people to see what it was like on South Beach. I'll throw in a little video here, but it was quite fun, but I did miss Virgin Hotels, and it seems like everybody who loves Vegas was there, and, you know, Rick... Let's start with, you know, Virgin Hotels. We know that it is the old Hard Rock, and we haven't known a whole lot about what it was going to be. They kind of trickled out information, but Virgin, obviously a brand out of the UK, but we know the casino is run by Mohegan Sun, and the hotel is a Hilton, and the restaurants are run by somebody else, the shops by somebody else. So this is... Put that all together, and you got a makings of a hot mess. Indeed. Yeah, so you have this sort of hodgepodge of stuff, and uh, this is, you know, the old Hard Rock property. So, you know, what were your expectations? Let's just start with that. Before before you arrived, um, you know, did you receive emails? Did they tell you, you know, when to arrive, what to do as a paying guest on opening night? What were your expectations going into to the opening and for your stay? Yeah, so I didn't receive anything from Hilton other than my confirmation. Um, I saw... Virgin tweeting about a 6 p.m. opening. And so I reached out to them and said, hey, when can hotel guests get there? And they said 12 p.m. They said I'd get a pre-arrival email, mentioned something about the parking garages, which I wasn't too concerned about. And so that's what I did. I showed up on opening day at 12 p.m. and a room was not ready for me. Was it, were the doors unlocked at least? Were you able to, to get inside? And was there anybody else there at noon or were you the only one who was given this information? Yeah, so I walked in, um, plenty of staff, plenty of suits everywhere, uh, a lot of VIP looking people. And I saw other people checking in and it looked like they were going to their room. So I'm not sure why mine was not ready. That's, I mean, that's crazy in itself. We'll talk about your room a little bit later because I know we have a lot of opinions on what the way that the room looks and the decor and everything else. But I guess <laughs> you got to tour the property a little bit. And, you know, we talked about in January, Virgin Hotels Las Vegas was supposed to open. And they said, we're not going to open in January because of market conditions. We're pretty much done with construction, but we're just not going to open until March. And they opened and you kind of were, you were messaging me and Mark around noon one as you were walking around the property, seeing how much just wasn't open, how much wasn't finished and just kind of walk through kind of what you discovered as you went through Virgin Hotels on that opening day, kind of before the party started. Yeah, so they said we didn't have a room yet. They, you know, said come back and check later. So started walking around the property. I thought, oh, well, let's go check out the pool scene, see what the pools look like, because I know that's a big thing that everybody wants to see, especially with changing over from the hard rock. 
So I walk outside and it's literally a construction zone. There's boards everywhere. There's like a little bit of like wood fencing up and like boards covering things. And it was crazy. I was like, there are no pools. One of them had some water in it, but there was just stuff everywhere. And so I started walking around a little bit more. If I got too close to their like VIP concert area, that's where security stepped in and said, hey, you can't be the, out here. The grassy knoll, basically, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this like carpeting that looks like AstroTurf that they basically threw over the pool. You can see it's the shape of the pool. But other than that, I was able to go outside and roam freely through this like construction zone of just unfinished pools and outdoor areas. And it was crazy. I was shocked. Pick up some tetanus on your uh, tour of the pool area. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's like watch where you're stepping as you're walking around. So those were some of the videos I was posting. I was like, I can't believe this property's not finished. Like you said, Sean, they tweeted that construction was on time in January. So I don't know what happened. It was nuts. And I mean, they took, we talked about this before, Mark and I on this show, they took what was one of the better pool areas in Vegas and cut it down in half. And now, as you said, they're now constructing a pool uh, because they decided to cut the old pool down and uh, what used to be the family pool is now going to be a day club. And I tweeted Virgin Hotels this week, asked them when the pool was going to open. They told me May. So it's still two months away or so. And I guess that's just the start of this place, which is sort of a hodgepodge of everything. The design is kind of all over the place. The, the venues, we'll talk kind of all about that. And it seems like their messaging out to the public is that way. As you point out, I, I've noticed on social media, they have this group of influencers that they spent a great amount of time promoting and having promote them. And it seemed like that was their focus to try to become, to come across as hip and cool. And it's sort of insane that they dropped the ball for customers on opening day, people who are paying money to stay there. And, you know, so what time did you finally get to your room? What time well, did they finally me, say your room is ready? Let me jump in on the influencers okay. thing. I found it so funny that they have pictures of like Tom, the two Toms from Vanderpump and Mario Lopez and stuff like that. And they put them at a table, like fake rolling dice, but there's no chips anywhere on the table. Like, could you just, how do you not put chips down? Like you want to make this look like they're actually gambling and having fun and they're rolling dice at an empty table. It is so stupid and, and just terrible, like bad planning. It doesn't look legit or real at all. You're going to spend this money to bring them out there and you can't even make it look semi authentic. But okay, move on to the the hotel that wasn't or the hotel rooms that weren't ready, even though it's brand new. How are you? What are you cleaning? But okay. <laughs> yeah, and that's the funny thing. So I went back each hour, and they were like, "We'll put in a priority request with housekeeping," and I'm like, "Priority request for what? It's day one. Like all your VIPs are already here. What are you cleaning?" And she just looked at me confused and was like, "Well, I have the request in, so." You know, we still are finishing up some paint. <laughs> we're still no, painting, they don't we? <laughs> they probably had some of their VIPs in these rooms. You were in a suite, so that'd be my guess, is that they had people staying in these rooms before opening night um, that were by invite or whatever. Because that's the only explanation, right? Why would a room not be clean unless it was used before? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I have no it idea. Look like it had been used? Uh, no, it looked brand new, and there were construction people all over the casino and the hallways. And I would not be shocked if they were literally putting those pictures up in the bedroom while I was waiting for a room. Okay, so let's talk about the room. Now, as a Hilton Honors Diamond member... Uh, can we, can we Virgin... talk about the carpet in the hallway first? Because it's the okay, most so hideous, <laughs> Wait, I, hideous okay. thing I've ever seen. And you walk upstairs, you get off the elevator, and if you're drunk, you're going to basically vomit everywhere because you can't believe how ugly it is. Okay, I'm going to insert yeah. video of that here, but I want to. This is a content warning for people out there because it is very, very strong. This stuff is very trippy and uh, it's very strong. But yeah, it is a decision that they made to put that carpet in for sure. But very the room is bright, itself, red, orange, southwestern look. It's crazy and brown, like an ugly, hideous brown. Yeah, like, diarrhea yeah, brown is all I can think of. <laughs> and their theme is so supposed to be desert chic. So that's sort of what they're going for hip deserty kind of look and I don't think that that carpet works out at all it's one of the ugliest things I've ever seen and I don't think it's going to last very long quite honestly because I don't think it's going to be popular uh, with guests but you get to the room now you got upgraded as a Hilton Honors Diamond member right Virgin Hotels is part of the Curio collection 
which is sort of an independent property collection that also uses the Hilton Honors program. Hilton Honors, of course, getting so many cool things in Vegas this year with Resorts World, going to have three different Hilton brands there. So really nice for Hilton members in, in Vegas. But you got upgraded to a suite. You booked the basic, basic room and you got upgraded to a suite, right? Yeah. So I originally booked what was called the Opal Chamber King, which is in the, I guess, the Opal Tower. Um, and then when I finally got a room four hours later at 4 p.m., they told me that I was in the King Chamber Deluxe, I think they called it. There's that, and then there's a deluxe suite. And so that's what I got. They did thank me for being a Hilton Diamond member when I originally tried to check in. So I was happy with the big room. It's just, as we saw, it looks very bare and unfinished. Well, as a Hilton and Honors I member, you got the benefit of that late check-in, you know? Everybody else who was a non-member, <laughs> they got early check-in. <laughs> as a Diamond member, you got that nice 4 p.m. It is surprising that they they took the hotel status and gave the upgrade, I think, because usually with a casino, stat, having status with it doesn't really mean much as far as for the hotel. But since Hilton is kind of running this separately, uh, you might see that more often if you're a gold member through their uh, Surpass card or a diamond member through their Aspire card. You might be, especially on slower weekends or a non-busy season, that could be a nice perk of staying here versus on the Strip is that you'll get an upgrade that has nothing to do with gambling. Yeah, exactly. And it is a huge room. So if you get that upgrade and you just want to hang out with your friends and have drinks and look at the strip, then, you know, that might be a reason to stay there, I guess. <laughs> well, that's a that's a ringing endorsement. <laughs> just to if, start. You, if you don't mind the very <laughs> basic <laughs> white bare walls everywhere when you walk around, this is your spot. <laughs> and that <laughs> is the I was going to say, we, we we talked about how the prices for the mini bar are supposed to be, you know, average street prices that you'd get at like a 7-Eleven or a convenience store. Did they even have a mini bar in your room? And were the prices what they had said they were going to be? Or, or did they forget about that when they were setting everything up? Yeah, so they forgot the most important part, which was the prices. But I did have a mini bar with a bunch of empty storage next to it and underneath cabinets and stuff. But there was a mini bar. It looked like it had a great selection. But again, no pricing, nothing about it. And I've kind of learned my lesson in Vegas. You don't start grabbing stuff. I'm a little bit of a cheap state on that kind of stuff. So I didn't want some like $200 bill. And I had watched your guys' coverage and was excited about that part of it. But I wasn't going to grab stuff without a price menu. The one thing that stood out to me from your videos and from seeing these rooms was just the bare walls in certain spots like the mini bar, like, or you had a bar area in your room and there was not a single thing on the wall. I think you said that it looked like it was unfinished. Like maybe they were, like you said, maybe they were, they're nailing stuff on the wall as you go. It seemed very sparse. It didn't seem luxurious in any way. Of course, Hilton Curio is not low end. I wouldn't even call it mid tier. I would call it mid upper tier as far as what this should probably be. It's not going to be a five-star hotel, but it is, should be a four-star hotel. It should be pretty darn solid. Did you feel like the room, the hard product, the, the furniture, did it deliver on that? Yeah, it was very bare. There was nothing. It's like they forgot to hang the artwork. And really, like I was joking about it, I felt like I was in an Ikea when it came to the living room area. It, does, it was just it very strange. Like yeah, it was just really weird. And I was like, you just felt like something was missing. And they had all that space by the counters and the mini bars. And there's like, no coffee maker, no glassware, nothing. It's like, it really is like they forgot to finish the room. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, insane. I just couldn't believe that they would open a hotel like this, given the amount of time that they had, given the fact that they delayed the opening. And I think it's pretty clear that they delayed the opening because of monetary issues. Um, that would be my, my guess, at, at least, because they clearly are delaying all this stuff. You don't have work, you, have, you don't have artwork on the walls, you don't have a pool area. In March in Vegas, a spring break is emerging. Every pool area in town is open. It seemed really, really disjointed. And I think that's because this, every part of this property is being run by different people. And, you know, Virgin doesn't run any of it. I mean, Virgin, essentially, it's just like a, a franchise. It's like a McDonald's, right? I mean, is, is, that, is that what you sort of learned? Or did you see any sort of influence? Did, did that come across that, of the Virgin brand on this property? Or did it seem like a bunch of different people running different parts of everything? 
Yeah, I mean, I think we all know Virgin and they're going to go over the top for something like a hotel opening and they're going to have all this pop and vibe and cool stuff. And it just didn't feel like that. I walked in through the casino, literally construction people are putting up things as I'm walking through the outside area. None of the dining was open during the day. Literally, there was the gift shop. And then I finally found the Mexican restaurant and bar which was open and it was only open because they had called in their employees early when they learned that the hotel was letting guests in at noon. Otherwise that wouldn't have been open either. And that is run by the Hakkasan group, I think is how you pronounce it, which is a Vegas nightclub scene or management company. So they have the Mexican restaurant and bar, um, Casa Calavera, I believe it's is. And, so the employee is like, I just got called in this morning. I don't know where my paychecks are coming from. It depends where I'm working in the casino. It just, it was really strange to me for an opening day. RIP Pink Taco. Because uh, that was that was what was there uh, before. Although I do, that's one area of, and we'll talk about the decor in a second. The Mexican restaurant is actually one area I think looks really cool. Looks pretty nice compared to, to some of the other areas there. Yeah, Hakkasan is running the restaurants, and then of course Hilton, the hotel, and then even the Hudson Group, which is like, you see those in, in Europe, you see the Hudson uh, kind of convenience stores all throughout Europe or in the UK, they're running all the shops there, I think six of the shops there. And then Mohegan Sun, the first Native American casino in uh, Las Vegas, running the casino. So it seems like that's crazy, and I didn't even think about this, employees don't know where their paycheck's coming from, they don't know who they're working for, how could you be organized if that's the case? I mean, how could you know uh, what you know what the other people are doing? And it seems like a setup for failure, uh, in my opinion. And this is really a first in Vegas. We do have companies like Caesars managing casinos for other companies that own the property. Um, that's largely been you know they sell they sell the land and then they manage it back. But we've never had a property where so many different parts are run by so many different people. And at least at the beginning, it seems like that concept failed. Yeah, absolutely. And I will agree with you that um, as far as the Mexican restaurant, they hit it out of the park, the glassware, the decor on the floors, like everything very detailed. But yeah, again, the employee who used to work at Hard Rock said, I always knew my paycheck was coming from Hard Rock or Pink Taco. He's like, I don't know where I'm going to be each day or where my check's coming from. So it definitely is a hodgepodge. And I don't know how that's going to work out with billing things to your room. I was just happy to have somewhere to sit and have a drink while I was waiting for this four hour wait for my room. And you're waiting four hours and the casino didn't open until six. So you couldn't even go spend time in the casino and the bars there weren't open. It's just kind of like a mess. I don't even know why they let people come in at noon, you know, yeah. because you don't have if you don't have restaurants open, the casino's not open. What are people going to do when they get into their room? There's nothing for them for them to do or pass the time. So it Take doesn't pictures of the pool reasons. area. <laughs> go walk around and get some nails in your foot. That's, yeah, that's what exactly. you can do. All right, so let's talk about the decor and what it, what your impressions are. What parts of the property did you like and did you not like? And then we'll talk about the opening party of the casino and sort of how that all went. You know, I, I, I hate to, we've been critical. Mark and I have seen pictures of it. We haven't seen it in person. I'll see it in person next week. But there hasn't been a lot that I've liked from what I've seen. And that's definitely been disappointing because this has been a very highly anticipated uh, project for me. I did see things like, you know, the Mexican restaurant and a few other things where I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But then when I take it all in- The gym. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But I'm, I keep thinking to myself, surely this will all make sense when I see it all together in person, not just a picture of this and a picture of that. Does it make sense? I mean, what are the highlights? What are the lowlights? Tell us. Yeah, it really doesn't make sense. Like you said, you have this amazing Mexican bar and restaurant with all these details. And then you go into the casino and I'm not really sure what they're trying to do there. It's a small sports book. It felt spacious, but then once you pack people in there, it felt cramped to me. I did like their bars and they had some nice, like kind of velvety couches and private rooms and they had a photo booth set up. So I really did like the bar scene. I liked the Mexican restaurant, but everything's just kind of pieced together. So it depends who was in charge of doing it, I think. There's no flow to the casino 
for the resort in my mind. And you can see that when we look at the carpeting and the rooms and it just doesn't make any sense to me for a virgin property. I, I did notice that the casino looked different than the rest of the property. And so that, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I definitely like the casino and what they did there other than the sports book just being too small, but nothing flowed from one section to another because I think different people were in charge of it and they just kind of mashed everything together. It did. I noticed on Twitter, some people pointed out the fact that there was natural light coming into the casino, which is kind of unique, especially towards the front area, it looked like. But it also, from the videos I saw and the pictures, it, it felt almost like an airport a little bit, like that type of vibe. It didn't feel like a, a cool, swanky casino. But I don't. did you notice the natural light coming in and did that, you know, kind of make the space feel bigger? That's kind of unique to casinos. So I, I wanted to see what you thought about that. Yeah, so there's two different check-in areas. And so all that natural light at the main entrance, which I didn't go through because it was closed, but there's definitely a lot of light coming in there. So, and the casino has an open feel when you walk in. So that was nice. And like I said, I like the casino, the bars, you know, the Mexican restaurant, but everything else, like you said, it just felt very airport-like and nothing went together. Speaking of bars, uh, rest in peace center bar with the cool domed ceiling where you could sit there and listen to people talk, uh, you know, across the, all the way across the bar, hear their conversations. For some reason, Virgin decided to leave that area completely bare and no bar, nothing, just, but the, the dome is still there, and the, but nothing's going on, which I thought was completely a strange choice and just asinine, I guess, because that was one of the, the drawing features to Hard Rock. So I don't know why you wouldn't use that if you already have it there and you kept it in into the feature of the of the building. Yeah, I think people are going to be most disappointed about that and probably the pool areas just being the two things that Hard Rock had going for it. Yeah, and you mentioned the sports book. That's in the same spot that the Hard Rock sports book was, and that was never very big. Although I think based on what I've researched, they've cut it down by about 20%. And the sports book isn't even really open. I know you can watch games there, but they haven't gotten their licensing yet. Most likely because that's another operator that's going to be operating it separately from Mohegan Sun, Virgin, Hilton, Hudson, Hakkasan. There we go. I got them all. Maybe, How about that? Maybe uh, Circa will get uh, another sports book put in there. <laughs> There it's called what the bet Fred. But the other thing about the bars is I saw a lot of chatter on this. People who like to play video poker and stuff in, in, in bars, there's only about 10, I think 10 spots to, to play machines on the bars there. So they've really taken out a lot of the gaming uh, from the bars. And I know the center bar was big on that. And yeah, it, it really is curious to me uh, what they're doing there, but uh, we'll see how that does. I don't, I don't gamble at bars, so I guess it's not thing I do, but I know it's possible. I had not noticed that, but that seems like the dumbest decision ever made because a lot of video poker players, they'll even go and play at a less, you know, a, a lower payout machine. The people that aren't experienced are doing it, you know, on a routine basis because they want to sit there. They want to have the drink service quick and right, you know, responsive service. So that those always get a ton of plays in every casino. And I would think that would be a, a big coin in area and to eliminate it just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I only saw one bar area that had machines up at the bar and everything else was kind of more the nightclub kind of cozy atmosphere. Otherwise, that was it. So I, you, I guess we can sort of try to conclude this and, and sum it up. I'd love to know what your uh, highlights are of the stay and their lowlights. I mean, what, what you liked about it and what you didn't. And would you ever recommend anybody stay there in the current condition that it is? Um, obviously, we know that they can change things, improve things. Um, and this property was very popular for a very long time. It has decent bones, if you will. But uh, what were you know the highlights and lowlights of your stay? Yeah, so I would say the highlights, I've kind of mentioned them. I like the bars um, when you're there at night. It, it was a cool vibe. It was probably a little too crowded, but I really liked the atmosphere and kind of the furniture and everything they did with it. And obviously the Mexican restaurant being pretty much the one place I could get into. I really liked what they did there. They had hand blown glassware with like the skulls and just everything was done well there. And the service was great in there. 
Um, but as far as everything else, I see no reason to stay there until we see an improvement. I mean, depending what the price point's going to be, I know they're not doing resort fees, but I mean, I spent $190 plus tax, so about $215. And I got lucky as a Diamond member. They weren't requiring a three-night minimum. But I can't imagine on opening weekends paying, spending $600 uh, to be there. It just doesn't make sense to me. And like I said earlier, unless you want a big room and try and get that Hilton upgrade, there's no reason to stay at an off-strip property with no pools that's a construction zone in my mind. I said to Sean uh, before we recorded it, I'm like, this has to be one of the, if not the worst launches in Vegas history, it seems like just a complete mess. And the choices they made, I mean, it'd be one thing if service was a little off, that's expected. But when the choices don't make sense and the, oh, that carpet, man, that's the, the most hideous yeah. thing I've ever seen in the hallways. But yeah, I mean, you look at something like Circa just launched and here comes my hashtag Circa fanboy. Um, you, you walk through that casino and you get the whole vibe and it all mixes together. And Sean's got a review coming out of the the hotel room and, and from the video I've seen that all kind of blends in well. And they really thought the whole thing through. But that's what you see when one guy, one visionary, one company is running it versus seven, eight different companies kind of doing their own little thing in their own little areas. It just, I don't know what they were thinking. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. And I was at the Circa opening on the first night. And so you felt welcomed. Everybody was friendly. And when I walked into Virgin, it felt like they were more worried about filming their VIPs and all these influencers and not really caring about the guest. And normally I wouldn't care about not getting a room until 4 p.m. But again, the hotel's brand new and you told me to show up at 12 p.m. So it was a mess. I think what Circa did so well was they delivered on what they promised as a brand, uh, even though it's sort of strange because they just created this brand. But uh, everything that they had done through the marketing, they delivered. And we know Virgin's brand pretty well, even though Virgin Hotels is still a fairly new brand itself. But we know Virgin. We know what to expect. And we expect good quality. We expect something that's hip and modern. And it doesn't sound like they really delivered on it. It doesn't look by the decor that they did. And uh, obviously, Virgin doesn't own this hotel. It's owned by a company that owns the, the building and then has everybody else do this. So Virgin's just another license that they have. So... Yeah, hopefully they'll they'll get this fixed. They'll make some improvements. There was a lot of negative chatter. A lot of people there. One blogger got kicked out. Uh, can you imagine somebody filming trying to promote your business on opening night and you kicking them out? You know, shame on you for charging people money for rooms that are not finished. Shame on you for not finishing your pool. I have faith. I, I know Genting very well, and I have faith that Resorts World will deliver on what they're promising as a Hilton. And uh, for now, I look forward to that and. I will be staying at Virgin in the next couple of weeks, so I'll have a, a full opinion of my own that I can share. But, but yeah, the first thing I thought when I saw uh, Rick's video was, I'm so glad I didn't spend the time and the money flying out there and dealing with, I hate not being able to check in. That's like my least favorite thing ever. And for an opening night, there's no excuse for not having the rooms ready. Like, you know how many people are coming. All the rooms should be done. This isn't, you know, like you closed down and you had to clean. You basically just built these things. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad I missed out. That the, was my biggest disappointment. I mean, we were all excited and then you get there, you can't get a room, you don't have a pool and it just really sours the mood from the get go. And I, yeah, it's it not just, like you can hop to the next door uh, casino on the strip or something and check your bags and, and go do something like you're stuck there unless you want to pay to get off property. And then there's nothing on property to do anyway. So it's it's ridiculous. It was a mess. Absolutely. I think that... Uh, Hashtag Virgin is a mess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, hopefully... Yeah. I, the other... I mean, we're all hotel nerds. We love this stuff. We love Vegas. We were all at Circa. Uh, you were there opening night. We joined you, uh, Mark and I, you know, the next day, I believe. Uh, all within the first 24 hours, it was open. We love this stuff. We're passionate. We want this to be good. We want to share this, but we're not going to lie to you about, about what something is and, and tell you something is great when it's not. And uh, hopefully more people will be honest. Hopefully they'll improve their, their situation. But for now, hopefully people understand what to expect if they're going to stay there, if they're going to play there, and uh, they can make up their minds. Thanks so much for joining us, Rick. Thanks so much for sharing all this and, and uh, for covering it. And 
Uh, on Twitter, you posted so many pictures and videos and obviously your review on Travel on Points, people can check that out for even more details and they can see all of this stuff. And uh, yeah, thanks for, for being there and uh, for taking one for the team. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Anytime. I specialize in hot messes, so. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. All right, well, thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time. See you next week.